You'd have to be stupid or crazy to end up in the middle of the Gobi Desert with two and a half million dollars in cash. These guys were a bit of both. That's Matt. Matt was making a perfectly good living in New York when he decided to quit. I hated it. Can't argue with that, Matt. It was like a week after that, I got a phone call from one of my college buddies, Diedrich. Matt. Diedrich looks a little like Michael Phelps, but can't swim nearly as fast. Anyhow, Diedrich was taking a trip to Mongolia. I was his only friend that didn't have a job. So a week later, I was on a plane to Mongolia. Next thing you know, they're on the other side of the world in Ulaanbaatar. That's the capital of Mongolia. Everyone knows that, right? Right. They met a couple locals named Bodio and Ishe and really hit it off. Bunch of goofballs. <laughs> These guys were so nice that they invited our intrepid travelers to meet their families out in the countryside. Sounds nice, doesn't it? So the next morning, they piled into a truck and started driving until the road stopped. Bodio never looks at where he's going. He plays cards the whole time. Just pedal the metal 80 miles an hour. He just looks like, okay, we're gonna go that direction. It's crazy. <laughs> and then they kept driving 20 hours until the truck broke down. And then they rode on the back of motorcycles until dawn when they reached a yurt belonging to a nomad named Dash. What's up, Dash? Dash comes out and greets us with a bottle of goat's milk vodka. Goat's milk vodka tastes a little bit like uh, throw up. We drink with them all night long. We have an amazing time. Uh, we don't speak their language and they don't speak ours. We just know that we're getting along because they seem to be making fun of us and smiling a lot. You're getting weird. Cross off the list. You're getting weird. Well, it was about to get a whole lot weirder, because the next day, Bodio and Ishe told our boys that they weren't going back to the capital for a month. Either we can find our own way home, or we'll go with them when they leave in a month. Yeah, they weren't going to be able to find their own way home. So with a month ahead of them, Matt and Dieterich decided to embrace the time they had and learn everything they could. They learned to ride motorcycles. They milked and herded goats. They even tried Mongolian wrestling. But what fascinated these guys more than anything else was what their nomadic hosts do for work. They raise a special kind of goat with the most luxurious hair in the world. You might know it as cashmere. We became really good friends with them. Almost family, it felt like, by the end of the trip. We leave thinking that we should find a way to help the people that helped us. They begin to work with Bodio on nonprofit work, breeding programs, veterinary work, grassland management strategies, but something wasn't right. They came to the harsh realization that the entire cashmere market was rigged. Middlemen were fixing the prices so that they made all the profit while the herder barely scraped by. So they came up with a lunatic idea. They would become the buyers. They would become cashmere traders and give their friends a bigger piece of the pie. They realized that if they cut out the middlemen that normally take all the profit, they could pay the herder more while also selling the product for less. All they had to do was figure out how to get millions of dollars. Two and a half million dollars so we could buy all the material from all the herders, everything in the region. They went back to New York and raised a ton of money. That's where all that cash comes in. We get to Mongolia a year later with the money. We drove 20 hours in the middle of the Gobi Desert and we bought 60 tons of cashmere. That's 20 tractor trailers filled with raw material. Now what does one do with 60 tons of cashmere? Well, you make clothes. But these guys don't make clothes. They could barely make breakfast. We just figured, like, how hard could it be to make a sweater? It's actually really, really hard. So they teamed up with co-founder and chief creative officer Hadas. When people see her clothes, they say, Hadas, she do it. Okay, they don't say it out loud, but they think it. So now they had a company, but they still needed a name. Nadam is the name of a festival that brings Mongolians together in celebration of its people and culture. So Nadam seemed like the perfect name for a company that brings both the consumers and creators of the world's finest clothing closer together. What started as a couple goofballs stranded in the Gobi Desert eventually led to the creation of the fairest, most sustainable, and most affordable, top-of-the-line cashmere the world has ever seen. So it's good for you, good for them, and yeah, guys, good for you.